I'm Ian Ellery, a wheat and sheep grower in the upper north of South Australia. Uh, we have a property that consists of about 6,000 hectares. 2,000 hectares uh, goes into cropping each year. We've found ourselves finding a, a lot of our cropping country becoming unviable uh, due to the unseasonal rainfalls that we're getting and we're trying to return some of that cropping country back to more potential for grazing. Our property is in a, in a 320 mil annual rainfall uh, but like I was saying, it's a little bit un invariable when we get it at the times of the year. We are running mainly merinos, we're all merinos at this stage with about a thousand uh, ewe replacement flock and uh, with around about a 21 micron uh, wool cut. Some of our less viable cropping country that we're trying to return to uh, better grazing potential, uh, we are trying to establish it with a perennial shrub system and uh, we've selected a variety of shrubs from an enrich site that we had here on our property for the last four or five years. And from that, we've chosen five varieties that are, uh, have got the characteristics that we need on our particular soils. We're trying to improve our pastures by not only establishing our annual grasses and our annual perennial grasses, we also need some of the perennial shrubs back to, to give us some of that bulk uh, in, in, into their diet. The advantage of your perennial grasses and your perennial shrubs is that they, you'll get, you can get the benefit of uh, unseasonal rainfalls. We've found uh, amongst our perennials that the, uh, from the grazing of them that you st still need to have a reasonably well established uh, understory. So we've spread out our plants to over five metre rows and about two metres apart in the rows um, to, to also leave enough space that we can plant down some understories of different fodders to, to assist with the, for the diet. Some of the understories that we're trialling at the moment in amongst the rows of perennials is uh, we've got some cereals, some rye, uh, medics, uh, vetch. We've also planted down some native grasses, uh, some of the windmill grasses and uh, wallaby grasses uh, from our local area. The beauty of those will also be that if we get unseasonal rainfalls, uh, some of those winter and summer grasses will still get the benefit of any rainfall at that time of year. The success of this system uh, in the future will have to be very, very carefully monitored so that the costs of establishment aren't too restrictive. Uh, selection of areas of ground, the, the soil types is also a very important issue to look at. The size of these sites uh, will be an issue with how you establish them for fencing costs. If they're too large, they may not be able to be grazed effectively and uh, also will need uh, watering points. I think this project lends itself to anyone that's got country that uh, is unarable, uh, whether it's from scalding or from reefing, reefy country, that uh, they could do it in, in, in parcels of land. Uh, I don't env envisage it being a broad uh, acre program on my property uh, because I still want to focus on, on cropping. Uh, in, this, in the mix, any more than 10% would be, I'd be surprised if we were to expand beyond that point.